Good evening. Hope you're all doing well. I have amazing news for you. Yes. Yeah. Taking all of when we start Daf Nun Tes, we will be starting the blot that is at the 40% line of Shas, oh, wow. which is a massive accomplishment. 40% of Shas. I will. I'll let you know every 5%. It's only tonight because we're going into the Amidala. That's why I'm announcing it tonight. Uh, we will be a half a day ahead and into the, the blot that is the 40th percent line of Shas, which is just unbelievable to think about. Maybe first to get there. Maybe. <laughs> no, we're going to be in Australia. <laughs> Unrelated. Um, yeah. okay. So we're in the middle of a, of a discussion here. Uh, the question was raised at the top of Nun Zion Amid Beis. We're going to be starting on the last line of Nun Zion Amid Beis. But the question was raised by Yishmael. If you have an onion that was, uh, the bulb began to grow in Shvis, it was plucked and then replanted in the eighth year, what happens to that bulb? Do we say that the heter, the new stuff from year eight, overrides the iser and everything becomes mutter? Or no, that because the bulb is usser, <clears throat> so therefore everything that grows out of it is also usser. We tried two answers yesterday. We rejected them both. We're up to answer number three, and we have to get through answer number five, and then we'll move on to other parts of the sugya. So the, the Gemara says, we have a question. We have an answer to Yishmael, and that goes like this. Elamin hada a language that we're finding familiar and common throughout Masechus Nadarim is this language of Hada. Uh, we've seen it now probably 15, 20 times. We'll see it a few more times tonight. Titania, Rabbi Shimon Omer. This is a Shas Sugya. These are beautiful Shas Sugya. The Gemara says as follows. Mark, Mark stop talking, okay? Kol davar shi matirin. If you have something that has a status of yesh matirin, namely that the status of iser falls away intentionally or automatically, uh, both of those words are choice words. So if you have something that's yesh matirin, could go in tevel. Tevel is something that's fixable. It's it's fixable. Go give meiser. It's not hard. Uh, umeiser sheni. Similarly, you can do a pigeon. The hektish you can do a pig pigeon. The chadash we wait for the hakrava of the korban omer. All of these things are together, Dabr Shiyesh Lamatirin. And in those cases, says the Gemara on the top of Nun Ches Aleph, Lo Nasnu Bohen Chachamim Shir. The Chachamim did not put in um, a ratio where Bittel would take place. So let's say this uh, succinctly. If it's something that is a Dabr Shiyesh Lamatirin, there's no Bittel. Okay. Chametz. Chametz. It's a Dabr Shiyesh Lamatirin. You just got to wait a maximum of eight days. And it'll be mutter. No bittel. That's why we're super machmer when it comes to Hilchos Pesach. Even for Blios, we're very, very machmer. Okay, that's one side of the coin. Bechol davar she ain lo matirin. But if there is something that doesn't automatically or intentionally become mutter, kigon, truma, which will always have the status of truma, utrumas meiser, which will always have that status, vechala, veorla, vekiloi hakerem, nasnu bahen chachamim shir. There, the Chachamim do give a status of Bittal. What is in this list that's strange? Orla. Isn't Orla a Dabr Sheshel Matirin? <laughs> Don't you just... No, those... Are they never Mutter? And the fruits only... The in... Are the fruits Aser? Be'etzim? Fruits are Aser? Okay, just making sure. It's just... I didn't prepare this. Right. So if there's a tree on the branch before the turn of the end of the third year, and then the year the clock changes, are those fruits they must be us or based on? Must be. Could be. All right. Anyways, in all of these cases where it's davrish she'en here, and then nas nubahen chachamim shir. So this, as you can see on the bottom line of nun zayin and is this brisa, the tanakam is Rib Shimon. So the Gemara says, Amrlo, the Chachamim said to Rab Shimon, hold on one second. Shvius has no heter. During year of Shvius, the food has no, there's no recourse. It's just going to be Shvius. And even though there's no recourse, there's no bittel. Ditznan, ha Shvius oseres kol shuhu bimina. Shvius will aser everything that precedes it. If, if Shvius grows on top of something mutter, done. The whole thing becomes aser. So Amar Lahan should be Amar Lahem. He says back to them, and this is Rib Shimon responding to the Rabbanon, Afani lo amarti I was only giving these parameters of Dabr Shiyesh Lamatir and Dabr Shayel Lamatir and only in regards to Biur. We know that the Pasuk Biarti Akodesh Minabais, that we have to at some point um, get rid of the Shviyas that's in our property. 
Avale Achila Beno Saint Tam. When it comes to Achila, forget Bittel, all of Achila is Beno Saint Tam. And we'll be learning about this uh, much more when we get into the Yoridea Sugyas of Kashros and flavors, and uh, if it's a Vida Lataima, all of these we'll get into at a later point. Uh, either way, What's the Gemara's question? The Gemara's question is from the line that's halfway down that Hashvis Oser is called Shubimina. What does that show you? That if you have something that grew in year six and now it grew a little bit in year seven, Oseris, it's the new stuff is going to Oser the old stuff, which means that the new stuff has impact on the old stuff. That's an answer that we that helps us. What were we trying to answer? We were trying to answer the question of, question of Yishmael. And his question was, what happens if, if Heter grows on top of Isser? So if Isser growing on top of Heter makes it Usser, so maybe this way as well. Maybe by, by Yishmael, we can say that if Heter grows, then it will override the Isser and it should be Mutter. Says the Gemara, it's not really a great response because the question that Yishmael was asking was a little different. Yishmael wanted to know if Heter grows on Isser, can it trump the, the Isser? What was this case? If Isser grows on Heter. And therefore says the Gemara, Vidil Moha Nami Luchum Rashaini. But maybe we're just being machmir. Maybe it's not, you know, we, we know this famous principle. We say this about poskim all the time. Koach de hetera ad. If you're not an impressive posek, if you're always being machmir, much more difficult to give a kula, much more difficult. You need to have broader shoulders. Some of the shilas that have come up of late are wild shilas. I mean, for Aguna, there's a crazy shilas that go on every day, like pulling the plug and brain death and these shy, you you just need very big shoulders. So the Gemara says, maybe the case that Rabbi Shimon is presenting is only a case of Chumrah. It's easy to be strict. And the case of Yishmael is a heter, so you cannot learn the two cases, one from another. And therefore the Gemara says, okay, good point. Let's move on to the fourth possible answer, two-thirds of the way down on Nunches Elamin Hada Pashta. We extracted an answer for, uh, of Yishmael's question from the following. Titznan, the Mishnah writes, Bitsalam Shiyardu Alain Gishamin Bitsamhu. Let's say that we had some bulbs, some onions that uh, initially grew in the sixth year, and now some water fell on them during the seventh year, and some leaves grew out of the bulb. So says the Gemara. Im Hayu Alin Shalohen Shachorin Asurin. If the leaves that grow are blackened, they're darker. So then that's going to be usher because the Gemara assumes, based on the Rishonim, that we are talking about the color of the dirt is absorbed into the leaf. If the leaf is darker, we know that, we know botanically that's not how this works. But the Gemara does make this assumption that the darker leaves are the ones that were yonic from the dirt themselves. And during a Shemitah year, that's problematic. And therefore, that's going to be usher. But Horiku, if the color was like more green, Yarok, if it was a little bit of a lighter color, then Mutarin, the Gemara says that maybe these leaves were only extracted from the bulb themselves. Sometimes we see this. If, we, if you have garlic, you can see a shoot growing out of garlic, even with no mud. That happens all the time. So this is a real thing botanic, botanically. And therefore, maybe the Gemara makes this distinction according to the Tanakama, that if the bitsalam, the, bitsa, the onions, absorb some water, if the leaves are very dark, then we assume that it drew from the earth, and that's kadosh, that's shviz. And if the leaves are very light colored, so then that's mutter, that's only uh, growth from the vegetable itself. Now that's the Tanakama, Reb Chanina ben Antigonus Omer, imicholen litlash be'olen shelahen asurin. If you're able, litlash, to, to pull on the leaf, uh, then it will be asur. Uchenegda, on the motzei shviis mutarin. And in a similar case scenario, in the eighth year, the motzei shviis, motzei shviis doesn't mean like motzei shab, it's like the night after, it means the year mm -hmm. after. Because during the eighth year, then it would be mutar. What is the inference from this difficult Mishnah? Two lines from the bottom, the Gemara suggests, the Memra, de gidule heter ma'alin es ha'iser. In the very last case, we see that the growth that took place in year eight, in the case of Motzei Shviz, we said it was mutarin. But hare, most of the growth took place in year seven. What does that show you? That teaches us that gidule heter is ma'alin es ha'iser. That when the mutar stuff grows, it overrides the, the bad stuff. And therefore, we have a beautiful raya. The previous case was Isser growing on Heter. We needed a case of Heter growing on Isser, and we got it. That's the case that we got here. Beautiful flow of the Gemara. <clears throat> the Gemara here, too, rejects this with just two words. Maybe we're talking about a case where the onions were crushed in this particular case, and that's why it's mutter, a bit of an ukimta. We'll come back to this later. And the Gemara then turns to its fifth and final answer that will help us to get an answer to the question of Yishma. Last couple of words on Nun Chesim and Aleph. El Amin Hada. Here is where we can learn an answer from uh, Rabbi for, Rabbi for Yishma's question, Detanya. 
The Brysa writes, Hamenachesh im hakusi bechasios. A person who is pruning a tree with a kusi, and it's bechasios. Chasios are, are, are bulb type of growth, like uh, we'll soon see these uh, garlic and onions and various types of onions, as we'll soon see. So if a person is menachesh, they're kind of plucking things off the tree as they, well, off the ground as they're moving along. Ochal mehen sarai. It's mutter to eat the, the food arai prior to the digun, prior to the time that it's spread out. You could just grab something and eat it, no problem. Umeasrin vada. But when we do the meister, that's a vada. Take a look at the mefarish. <clears throat> Take a look at the mefarish on the top. It says, Ochal mehen arai, kemoshar tevel gomor, which is typically the rule that by tevel, until there's miruach hakri, until there's a smoothing out of the vegetation, of the vegetables, then there's no din yet of isra achila. You're allowed to eat bechila sarai. And the mefarish continues on the second line, Ma'asran vadai, below dmai. This is not considered demai. Why not? Demai is suffix, a suffix of its mu'usar, because devadai kusi lo hifrish maiser mehen kla. So that's what's going on here. And that's the Tanakama. That if a person is menachesh with a kusi, then he's allowed to eat achila sarai in ma'asar vadai. Reb Shimon ben, ben Elazar Omer, im Yisrael, im Yisrael chashur ala shviz, if we have a case of a person who's not from, he's chashur ala shviz, someone who eats Someone who works the field during his year of Shvi's, he's not from. He has no Namanus. So then Lemotse Shvi is mutter. Then on Motse Shvi is in the next year, in the eighth year, it will be mutter. Now, what that implies is if in the eighth year the food becomes mutter, that means growth of heter on top of growth of iser overrides. That's why it says mutter on the fourth line. The Mamer de Gidule Heter Malinasa Iser. And therefore we have a valid answer for our question. Yishmael wanted to know if heter grows on Iser. Does it override? And here we have a, a, a very good answer. And we'll see in a moment the Gemara couldn't give the rejection that it gave by the previous case. Let's ask a couple of questions on this case. The Dilma Badavar Shizaro Kala. Maybe this case of Menache Shimakusi was talking about a case where seeds disintegrate, as we spoke about with apple seeds and many other seeds that when you put them in the ground, the first step is that they that the, the ground destroys them and from the destruction comes the seed. So says the Gemara, that's impossible. This case of Menachei Shimakusi, by definition, cannot be talking about seeds that disintegrate. Why? Because five lines down, six lines down, Hotanya, Eluhein Chasios. We have a brisa that tells us what tells us what chasios are. Chasios are kigon haluf, hashum vehabitzalim. All three, three of these types of veg, vegetation are bulb types of vegetation where their seeds don't disintegrate in the ground first. So you can't argue that the case of Menachesh is talking about a case of Davar Shezar Okala. <clears throat> Asks the Gemara of Adilma B'meduchnen. Maybe we should say that this is crushed. Says the Gemara, that wouldn't happen with a person who's Chashet al We have a case of Chashet al When you're crushing something up, you're trying to hide something. This guy's not from, he's Mechal Shabbos. He's a Mechal Shabbos. Like that's not... Do you think he's going to worry about some sneaky uh, miser trick? He's not. He's Bichlal not interested. He's not from. The Dilma Vataroves, maybe the case of Menachesh, maybe there's a Taroves, maybe there's really some Bittel going on here. Says the Gemara, you can't say that because they never collected anything into a container. How were they doing this? They walked by, they plucked something out of the ground. Oh, look, it's a piece of garlic. I'm going to have some garlic. It was Menachesh, HaMenachesh Ketani. And therefore, says the Gemara, <clears throat> Because it's a case of Benachesh, they weren't put into a container. Therefore, by definition, there's no Ta'aroves. And therefore, our answer stands. And we, we we don't quite close out the sugya yet, but we have an answer to our question. Yishmael said, if I have Heter growing on Iser in regards to Shviz, what's the din? So based on this Gemara, we would paskin that Ladina, that if there is growth of Heter greater than the initial growth of Iser, it will override the Iser and the whole entire thing become, becomes Mutter. Good. A blot and a half of Gemara, uh, just to have one answer. And the Gemara says, wait one second, a blot and a half ago, when we started this conversation, we gave the same answer. We said the heter overrides. Remember the Gemara said, but wait one second, you have two Amoraim against one. It's not, that's not from, you can't do that. So says the Gemara, Lema Tabit Yufta de Rav Yochanan u de Rav Yonasan. Because we saw that the case of Kilaim and Orla that were brought up by these two Amoraim who were Osir, who seemed to imply that the latter, which is Mutter, doesn't override the prior, which is Osir. So says the Gemara, maybe they're wrong. Amar of Yitzchak, no. Shanya Shvi'is. Shvi'is is different. Polvi Isura al Yadei Karka. Shvi'is is different. Why is Shvi'is different? Because Be'etzem, the Shvi'is becomes Usr because of the land. And therefore, Betelsa, uh, 
Nami al yudei karka. Any bittel that can take place is by the karka. So by shvi is the kedusha is in the ground, and the bittel can happen in the ground. So if it grows in the seventh year and it becomes asr, that's because of the karka. And if it grows in the eighth year, it's going to be mavatel in the same space in which it became kadosh. No problem at all. Masha'enkein, when it comes to cases of orla and kilayim, those are external issues. They're not inherent issues. Orla is because it's the fruit of the first three years. The first fruit of the fourth year is mutter. Kilayim, it's only usher because of something else that's planted next to it. But be'etzem, the food is completely mutter. So the cases of kilayim and the case of orla are not comparable to the case of shvi'is, where the isser by shvi'is is inherent, and the isser by orla and kilayim is secondary. It's external to the etzem fruit. Yes, eating it is usher, but it's only usher because of a context of or la the first three years, or kilayim, there's something else in the garden. So therefore, the Gemara rejects this question. Asks the Gemara, wait one second. We have an answer that kind of teeters both sides of the camp here. How does this work? Hare maiser. Maiser is the isure gabe kar, al yudei karka. Maiser is usher because of the ground, right? And yet, ve'en betel sa al yudei karka. Yet there is no bitel when it comes to maiser. How do we know that? Four lines from the bottom to Tanya. The Brisa writes, litra maiser tevel, this is a very strange language. What's Meiser Tevel? Isn't that a stira? If something is Meuser, then it's not Tevel. So the case of Meiser Tevel is where the initial Meiser was taken off and the food was then got, re received by the Levi and the Levi didn't take off his own Trumas Meiser. Weird case. Okay, so there's a collection of Meiser Tevel and that means the Meiser was taken off and the Trumas Meiser was not taken off. Shezara Bekarka Vihishbicha. It was planted. Meiser was already taken off, and we planted all of those uh, all of those vegetables, all of those seeds. And then it vihishpicha litrin, and it grew tenfold. Why does the Gemara say Why are you having meiser? What? You already gave meiser, but the Gemara says that there's no bittel. So that was the whole point: is that you, you should have it should have been bottled to the initial. Where does the seeds come from? Yeah. What? Where did Shvius come from? And what does it mean, Ubishvius? What does it mean, Ubishvius? It means that if, uh, I know what it means. I don't know why it took me so long to put that together, but <laughs> it means that if the initial fruits were grown in the sixth year and it was replanted in the seventh year and grew, same bulb. Uh, the Gemara will say that it's now Asr and Shvis, even though the, the root of it was grown in the sixth year. Correct. So before, correct, right? correct. That has to be the explanation. So the Gemara here is just pointing out that we have a contradiction. You were saying that if Shvis is inherent Kedusha and the Bittal can happen there, if Meister is inherent Kedusha, why can't the Bittal happen there? Stira. The Gemara says, uh, oh, sorry, one more line. The Osa Litra, the initial um, food that you actually put in the ground, Meister Aleha Mimakum Acher Lefi Cheshben. There, you have to take what you planted, not the, only the proceeds, what you planted needs its own miser as well, even though miser is already taken off of it. That's a side din for now. But the Gemara now asks on this, okay, we have a stira now. You wanted to say that by Shvi is because the Kedusha was inherent, the Bittal can happen there too. If the ground is what made the Shvi's Kadosh, then the ground is what can make the Shvi's Batal. And therefore, if you have something that was started out by Isser, in the seventh year it was planted, and then it grew a little bit in the eighth year, it grew some Heter, so says the Gemara, that makes sense. Uh, asks the Gemara, why doesn't Meiser have the same din? If Meiser is inherent, just like Shvi, says, why can't there be Bittal Meiser? Yet we see there's no Bittal Meiser. All right, the Gemara says, So the Gemara responds with a very important halachic distinction in regards to the world of Zeraim. Amre, the Gemara says on the top of Nuntes Medalev, Meiser digun hudekagarim le. Really, Meiser is not inherently kadosh in the same way that Shvi is. What makes Meiser Meiser is the Meiser Digun, is smoothing everything out. That's the Miruah uh, Hakri, as we've seen in other places in Shas. That's what the Gemara says, Belomdus. And if you take a look at the language of the Ran, it's very explicit, the Ran top line. Sha'al Yadei Digun Mishchayi B'Meiser, Velo Al Yadei Karka, very explicit. And this is the distinction, the chasm between the world of Shvius and the world of Meiser. Great question from the Gemara. Have a mina that maybe Meiser has the same. Inherent Kedusha like Shviz says the Gemara, no, Shviz is inherent. Meiser requires the, requires the Meiser Digun, the smoothing out of the Meiser, to become Meiser. It's not Meiser yet. It's not Shaykh by Meiser until the Meiser Digun, therefore the question falls away. Beautiful. Beautiful.
Okay, uh, we're on the top of the test. We're going to ask one question, give two answers, and then we're going to call it a night, and we're going to stop about seven or eight lines from the bottom at Gufa. And the Gemara asks a question all the way back to the block that we learned uh, yesterday, Nun Zion Amid Beis. And halfway down that page, we learned a shita of Rav Yanai. I'm just going to read Rav Yanai's shita now. You're welcome to join me halfway down in Nun Zion Amid Beis. Um, and the first word's on the line. Da'amar Rav Yanai Tritaa, Amar Rav Yanai. This was his shita, that if you have an onion of truma that was planted, and then um, heter grew on top of it, mutter. Okay, that's the shita of Rabbiana. Now, says the Gemara, Masiv on that shita, top line of Nun Tesimad Aleph, Masiv Rami Bar Chama, Konam Perus Ha'ilu Alai. We learned in our Mishnah that if a person makes a neder, a konam, on peros, on specific fruits that they would not eat, or similar equivalent languages of konam heim lefi, konam heim lefi, which are konam heim alpi, konam heim lefi. All of these we said were aser bechilufein begidulehen. If you're very specific in your language, fruit X I will not eat, by definition, that every replacement of that will be aser, and all the seeds that grow from it will be aser. We had also said in our Mishnah, shani ochel shani toim, a broader language, I won't eat your food, or something more general. What did we also say in our Mishnah? That's only true with Davar She Zarokala. It's only true by things where Zarokala. Aval Davar She'ein Zarokala. Here's the line. When we're dealing with foods where the seeds don't disintegrate, such as bulbs, Afilu Gidule Gidulin Asurin. Even that which grows from them will be Asur. What was the case of Rav Yanai that we just saw in Nanzayan Amid Beis? Rav Yanai writes, quote, Onion, bulb, it's not davar kala, the seed does not disintegrate. What do we see over there? He says it's mutter if the heter grows out of it. Says the Gemara, Rav Yana, your shita is absolutely, it's against our Mishnah. Because our Mishnah said, Dafka, and let's read our language here, six lines down. Aval kala. If the seed doesn't disintegrate, afilu gidule gidule nasurin. How can you tell me that the growth is going to be mutter, Rav Yanai? Our Mishnah says that it's asur. It says the Gemara, two answers. First of all, the, the, the one from Plaza was when the growth was greater than the original. Doesn't matter. Because the Gemara says that if you have a seed that doesn't disintegrate, which is an onion, then all the Gidula Marasar. How could Rav Yanai say that the, the heter outweighed the Isser? There's no heter. Everything that's gidu, that's that's a bulb is Gidula like Gidula. Yeah, the whole, the whole thing was, it's, you're, the, but he's pulling out the carpet from under Rav Yanai. His whole shita was difficult. So the Gemara j- tries to give answer number one, a quarter of the way down. Amar Rabbi Abba, shiny konamos. So what are we saying? Rav Yanai's case and our case are very different. How so? Since by a konam, a person is able to undo their konam, yet by Rav Yanai we weren't able to do that. It's a case of shvis or a case of truma, right? Since by a konam we're not able to do that, in regards to the case of konam, the reason why in our Mishnah we said that a seed that it, that doesn't dissolve, that doesn't disintegrate, is never subject to bittel. That's because it's a davar shiyesh lo matirin. Go undo your neder. It's always going to be a davar shiyesh lo matirin. Sorry, what's the difference between all these languages of neder that say neder instead of konam? Not Could be, but here, here we're talking about our mission is talking about a case of konam, and the other case is a case of truma. There was no neder made. So what we're trying to do, I'm glad you asked that. We're trying to show a distinction between our Mishnah, which is neder language, and a case of truma where there is some type of technical iser on the food. In regards to the world of our Mishnah, where it was konam language, konam can always be undone. That's a davar sheyesh A davar sheyesh never has bittel. And therefore, because there's no bittel, anything that grows in our Mishnah is a zosaser. Masha'en kein, in the world of truma, which is a davar she'en lo matirin, we do have bittel. So Rav Yanai is, is kaftor v'ferach. Rav Yanai says, I'm not talking about your case in the Mishnah. Your case in the Mishnah is davar she'esh lo matirin. My case is an iser truma because it's an iser and there's it's not a davar she'esh lo matirin. So then the heter outweighs and then you're fine. Beautiful answer. So that's what the Gemara says. So the Gemara says, wait one second. The truma di'iboi 
We can undo truma, says the Gemara. Ubat leberov, says the Gemara. Wait one second. Really, is davar shiyesh lomatirin. Truma is a davar shiyesh lomatirin. We'll see how in a moment. And a davar shiyesh lomatirin should. Which one is it? Davar shiyesh lomatirin should have bittel, and it should be bat leberov. It's not. Where do we see such a case? No. What? Davar she. What was this case? His case, very truma. The boy miss shalale, which is a davar shiyesh lomatirin. Which means it should be. Hey. <laughs> uh, should have no betel. Yet we see that it's bat leberov. Correct. Thank you, David. How so? Ditnan. We have to make a diuk. Saw truma tmeya. Shenafa the pachos mi meachulin. We know in general by truma the ratio of betel is one to a hundred. If you have one saw of truma that fell into 99 other saw of truma, which is not enough, you need a hundred other parts. The halacha is, and then tirkav. The whole thing has to sit and spoil. No one can eat it. What does that imply? We see that by truma, that there is bittel. So says the Gemara, oh, we have to give a new kinta. It must be that the case of truma, Amre says the Gemara, Amre, but truma biyad koin askinam. We're not talking about truma in the hand of a Yisrael. We're talking about truma that's in the hand of a koin. We must be talking about a case of truma where the, the truma is already in the hand of the Kohen. No bitl can be done because the Kohen has it in his hands. You can't do bitl anymore. It's his. You're done. Conversation's over. Says the Gemara, that doesn't work. Later in the Brisa, we have a problem. What does it say? That that if we ever find out that it's a Tahora, you can sell it to the Kohen. Well, if you're selling it to the Kohen, it means the Kohen doesn't have it yet. So therefore, that answer does not work. Ella says the Gemara Ukimta number two, it must be Bisrael, uh, not quite Yuvamos esque, but uh, a little tab, a little tab. Echad Bishishim. Ella Bisrael Shanaflulo, mi base avi imo, Kohen askinan. If my mother is a Bas Kohen, then my grandfather on the maternal line is a Kohen. That's what the Gemara says that we're talking about, is where a person's uh, maternal grandfather is a Kohen. So let's read this again. Ella says the Gemara halfway down, That's what we're talking about. And uh, he got it as a Yerusha, but it, it already was Truma. It was already in the hands of a Kohen. So there's no Bittal to be done anymore. Mm-hmm. Says the Gemara, that doesn't work either. So the Gemara says that that doesn't really work because that initial Sa that, that fell in and got mixed in that was the truma, but that's really yours. That's your Yerusha. So why does it say over here, chutz midmei osasa? So therefore, it can't be this ukimta that is the maternal grandfather who's a Kohen. <laughs> Ella says the Gemara, and with this answer, we'll be stopping. <laughs> Ella Ema says the Gemara. Bishlama konamos. I, uh, we, are, this is, we have a very good approach in regards to konamos, in regards to making nadarim. Mitzvah le'ishu le'alehen. That if a person makes a neder, so then it's a mitzvah to undo your neder. We should not be holding the dharm like this. Mishum de Reb Nassan, this Gemara we've seen before. The Amar Reb Nassan, kol hano der ki ilu bama, that if one makes a nether, it's as if they built a bama, which is a halachically invalid and inappropriate uh, space to do a korban, a mizbeach that should not exist. Veha mekaimo, and if you, not only did you not undo the nether, which you should have, but if you fulfill your nether, which sounds like a good thing to do, the Gemara says it's not so gishmak. Veha mekaimo ki ilu maktir aleha. So says the Gemara, Truma, my mitzvah, le'ishulei la'ala. This is the Gemara's distinction. Is that when we are talking about the world of konamos, mitzvah to undo your nether. But by Truma, even though technically there's a way to undo the Truma, you can figure it out, but that's not a mitzvah. And therefore, the distinction that we have over here between konamos and uh, truma is quite distinct. So we've saved Rav Yanai. We asked, what about Rav Yanai who allows the bulbs to be overridden a heter against Isser? And then the Gemara responds. This is answer number two. There's no, the worlds are different worlds. Konamos are meant to be undone. And therefore, uh, they're different than the world of Trumas, which are not. We'll stop right here. Pick up on Shabbos in Yer Tzashem 45 minutes before uh, Mincha. And we'll pick up from Gufa. We'll do Nun Tess and Lebez and Sadab Samech. Wishing you all a beautiful night. Does anybody know what